Very good morning. It's my pleasure to be with you today addressing GeoGnite conference. Thank you very much to Jonathan for inviting me uh, for being part of this eminent panelist at this conference. I represent Geospatial World, a knowledge organization having its mission to advance geospatial knowledge for sustainability. And therefore, today I'm going to talk about how geospatial industry is advancing sustainability. Sustainability, in my opinion, refers to the ability and capacity of human civilization to coexist with Earth's environment. It's an interdependent phenomena. It's an interdependence of society, economy, and environment, which combines together in the form of sustainability. Sustainability means meeting our own needs without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. In addition to natural resources, we also need social and economic resources. That's how sustainability is not just about environmentalism. Well, sustainability is still an evolving concept, although it has gained momentum in recent years a tremendous momentum in recent years. And it's a kind of ecosystem of ecosystems, a connected and interdependent nervous system at the planetary level. And that's what is the evolution of sustainability is currently going on. That how do you look at the ecosystem of this whole phenomena of sustainability? Let's look at it. What as a world we are facing today in terms of global risk. The global risk which we have today as per the World Economic Forum is could be in three to five very important aspects. Society, economy, and environment is definitely the fundamental pillars of the sustainability and it's being challenged by, uh, you know, it's being challenged globally. But apart from that, what you are also looking at technological and geopolitical risk. So technological and geopolitical risk are two additional dimensions of global risk as has been mapped out by World Economic Forum. But most of the respondents are talking about the social and environmental and economic challenges. Whereas technological and geopolitical challenges are uh, equally emerging as the problem areas. So let's look at how climate change, we all talk about climate change, but let's look at how climate change is offering a big threat to GDP. The world economy could be shrinking by 18% in the next 30 years because of the damages happening around the climate or the weather conditions. China stands to lose almost 25% of its GDP by 2050, and US and Canada and UK would lose around 10%, and so as Europe is likely to lose around 11%. Just imagine the amount of economy we would be losing because of the challenges caused by the climate change. And this means that the climate change is not just a concern for environmentalists, but it's a concern for the whole economy, whole, whole society, and whole probably generations. And this, uh, in a slide which I'm sharing with you is about circular economy. It's a complex economic world. It's a very complex but interconnected economic world. And again, I would quote World Economic Forum for bringing together a whole integrated concept of circular economy, which starts from a new way of understanding the economic growth, which is driven by the technological innovation in terms of circular, circularity of the whole business process. That business process is actually changing the way we have been looking at the economy. And that's why the circular economy is so critical and so important uh, in our age. 
And when we talk of circular economy, and as I started my talk about ecosystem, the sustainability is an ecosystem uh, issue. And so as the ecosystem approach is needed towards achieving the sustainability. When I say ecosystem approach, I actually you know, want to bring forward that sustainability is a responsibility of everyone. But how do we do that? We can do that by, first of all, acknowledging that sustainability of everything is important. We need to recognize the need for conservation, that we have to conserve. We cannot just keep on consuming more and more. Then we need to share the resources. We have to think about sharing of resources with making provisions for common minimum standards of living for everyone. That common minimum standards of living is so important. And if I go back to why geopolitical uh, you know, is crisis is happening because of common minimum standards of living and the principles of environmental security around the world. We cannot just secure, uh, you know, environment in a particular geography and let another geography be subject to that uh, challenge more severely. So this is what I mean by ecosystem approach of sustainability. Let's look at how geospatial world as a company and geospatial industry as a community is advancing knowledge for sustainability and what is the role of you know, geospatial industry in this. So moving forward, I want to talk about geospatial infrastructure, the transition of geospatial knowledge infrastructure in a digital world. We all have heard about spatial data infrastructure for last 20 to 25 years. And it was very important initiative taken in the early 20, 20, uh, 2000s. But over a period of innovation in last 10 to 15 years, what we have seen is that data-centric uh, you know, system have become analytics-centric data platforms. And we are talking about transition of spatial data infrastructure to geospatial knowledge infrastructure through the prism of United Nations Integrated Geospatial Information Framework. So it's very important movement uh, where you're looking at geospatial knowledge to be used for sustainable development. And the primarily the difference between SDI and GKI framework is movement from data centric to analytics, centralized system to distributed system, desktop system to cloud-based system, 2D representation to 4D, 5D representation, supply-centric to demand-centric. That's very important. It's static to looking at more spatial users add adding to this, looking at more IoT sensors adding to this. It's a kind of concept which is intelligent search. It is intelligent data platform. It is service-driven data platforms. It is user-driven data platforms. And that's where the geospatial community, in terms of its knowledge network, is moving to. Further moving forward, I want to say that geospatial industry and its value chain, how do we actually contribute to sustainability? On the one side, you'll see a host of geospatial technologies uh, like surveying, earth observation, or GNSS. All these technologies are getting integrated with mainstream IT capabilities and then looking at workflow integrations. Workflow integration, which is user domain driven, be it architecture, engineering, and constructions, be it business enterprises, be it utility networks, be it defense, be it energy. All these fundamentals of economy have their own workflows and geospatial industry is embedding its capabilities into those workflows. And then they are actually developing a kind of uh, you know, applications which could be delivered through various platforms like enterprise or web or social media. And then this is what we see as a value addition. This is the kind of ben benefits which our industry is uh, offering to uh, the whole world. And what I want to make a distinction when I go back to my slide on uh, GKI, SDI to GKI, 
So when SDI was there, it was more of a decision support system. When we are talking of GKI, the output is efficiency, productivity, and monitoring capabilities, and so as transparency. So the, even the value chain is uh, evolving. Even the benefits are changing to be more and more uh, you know, concrete in terms of results. Well, we all heard about uh, digital twin. Uh, digital twin or metaverse, which as we know it today, is the main pillar of fourth industrial age. If you look at fourth industrial age, metaverse and digital twin is the kind of outcome in the form of the process, technologies, analysis, and services. So all these technologies are getting integrated into a platform to make a digital twin. Digital twin, in my opinion, is nothing but a digital representation of a physical world in a real time or a near real time. And digital twin could be of every industry because every industry has their own workflows, their own data ecosystems, their own uh, solutions. And so as digital twin would be of uh, various industries. So we will have a digital twin of energy, we will have a digital twin of uh, constructions, we'll have a digital twin of agriculture, we'll have a digital twin of mining. You just name an application, you'll find a digital twin. But what is relevance of geospatial infrastructure is that geospatial infrastructure is actually embedding and powering digital twin and adding the third dimension. Third dimension which makes it more visual, which makes it more analytical, which makes it more understandable. So the third dimension, fourth dimensions, which is being added into this whole concept of digital world is being provided by the geospatial knowledge infrastructure. And it's a clear correlation if you see that the readiness index of geospatial readiness index on the one side and other indexes. And you'll find that the countries which are top countries in geospatial readiness index they are also doing very well into other indexes. So there is a direct connect between the level of adoption of geospatial capabilities or the level of adoption applications of geospatial knowledge in across various sectors. That is how those sectors are progressing and contributing to the GDP and other kind of indicators. Well, let me also talk to you about in crisp what's happening in geospatial industry and what are the market directions. For well, technology trends, we have host of innovation going on across almost every walk of life. But some of the technologies which are driving most of us and so as for the geospatial industry as well is say artificial intelligence and machine learning or deep learning. That is the number one. The 75% of our respondents talk about that artificial intelligence and machine learning is the biggest driver of geospatial industry, followed by digital infrastructure, sensors, and IoT technologies, and aerial mapping, which is drones and UAVs. Now, you don't need aircrafts always for mapping. Now you have drones and UAVs. And then you have a ubiquitous connectivity, which is 5G. 5G is powering the whole connectivity, the whole capability to process the data at your device level and distribute that data, share that data in a real time. And then miniaturization of new sensors and GeoBIM and digital twins or data cubes. So these are the kind of technologies which are taking place around the world, which is actually driving the geospatial industry. And so as the business trends, the business trends are also changing. So as the business models are changing, we are looking at integration of uh, you know, workflows as the biggest driver or biggest business opportunity where you're seeing those companies are partnering with mainstream companies and integrating geospatial workflows into their workflows. An example of uh, Autodesk and ESRI collaboration is a very classic example of that. Moving forward, you are talking about collaborative agreements. There's so much of collaborative agreements taking place and the collaboration is the new mantra of uh, you know, business models. And third is the role of national geospatial organizations. You know, this is very surprising that 
the role of national geospatial organizations is growing like anything. Uh, uh, sometimes back we thought that probably the national mapping organizations are dying, but actually that's not the case. As we are getting more and more into digital twins, we need more precise information, we need more foundational geospatial infrastructure, and that is where the geospatial agency's role is increasingly becoming critical, and they are evolving and transforming themselves. Fourth is the legislative environment. The legislative environments, and I can say that there has been several public policy reforms. And in fact, if you look at the foundation of public policy reforms, which drove the innovation in the last 25 years, were the three major public policies. When in 1991, you saw the opening of World Wide Web, and in 1992, you saw the first commercial license for uh, satellite was granted by the United States. And in 2000 year, 2000, we saw doing away with the selective availability of GPS. Those were the three, four major public policy reforms which were taken, which actually brought innovation. And that innovation made this industry of geospatial technology to be a solution driven or solution oriented industry rather than a technology product oriented. And right now, again, we are actually at that uh, threshold where we are seeing host of public policy reforms. And those public policy reforms, whether it is in UK or US or in Australia or India, you are seeing that the government is looking at uh, investing more into the geospatial infrastructure and um, you know, making geospatial data openly available. These reforms will also uh, be driven by standards and interoperability frameworks, and that combined, you know, uh, you know, process would make much more business opportunities for our industry. And this is what I want to say that our industry and market size is going to look like. Today, we are in around $450 billion market. And by 2025, we will be about $680 billion market. And by 2020, uh, 2030, we'll be about a trillion dollar market. And this growth from 22 to 2030 is going to, going to be driven heavily by innovation and embedment and public policy reforms. That's how we as a geospatial industry are connected around the whole economic and social cycle. And that is where we are looking at making our business uh, or our impact much more uh, you know, meaningful. So I talked about policies. And if you look at the impact of the public policy from 2022 to 2025, almost 23 to 25% growth. If we did not have these policy changes, we might still be growing by 2025 uh, to uh, you know some levels uh, of 680. But if you look at uh, public policy reforms can drive it to go even bigger. And that is why I'm projecting that by 2030, it will be a trillion dollar market because these public policy reforms would start showing the result after 2025 a lot. making it almost a trillion dollar economy or trillion dollar market. So what I would like to talk about is growing relevance and value of geospatial knowledge and sustainable development is gaining momentum worldwide. Real time geospatial content would serve as oil to digital economy and societies. And that would be driving almost every walk of sustainability as envisaged by the United Nations through their sustainable development goals. You can find applications and the relevance of geospatial knowledge, not only in the form of decision making, but in the form of productivity and efficiency of these sectors. The productivity and efficiency of these sectors would lie uh, uh, depend a lot on uh, digital capabilities and digital uh, you know, infrastructure and the ability of these sectors to make use of the information, make use of the power of the information. And that's why I would like to say that it's very imperative to continue investment in developing robust geospatial knowledge infrastructure and its integration with domain workflows of major economic industries. 
that will be enhancing productivity, efficiency, and cost effectiveness as important instrument of sustainability of everything. And especially this is very important for our friends in developing countries who have to, who are lagging behind in making use of the power of knowledge. And in the fourth industrial age, if they want to grow up and they want to catch up and they want to make their living better, they have to put it on priority. And that is how I would say that sustainability of everything is lying a lot on the intent and ability of the societies to make investments in the geospatial knowledge infrastructure, as well as its integration in the national priorities. What I'm worried about is this uh, cartoon which I saw somewhere, you know, though in the COVID times we love to, you know, wash our hands very regularly, but I hope that, you know, we don't wash our hands from the bigger issues of recession or climate change or biodiversity collapse, which we are actually, uh, you know, probably uh, anticipating in times to come. We need to be very, very uh, careful in addressing the likely challenges and uh, be responsible uh, at everyone's level to make it happen and at everyone's level uh, to really contribute and own that we have to be the sustainability champions. With this, I would like to say thank you very much. Mm -hmm.